Channel 2 News Weekend. With Robin Robinson. Weather with Tony Pagnotti. And sports with Martin Wyatt. This is Channel 2 News. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I'm Robin Robinson. Here's some of what's ahead tonight. An Ellicott City teenager is being questioned about an arson fire that left two of his brothers dead. There's much controversy over a newsletter put out by the state Republican Party linking Michael Dukakis to a criminal. And we know at least one of the three winning ticket holders in the $60 million California lottery. Howard County police may charge a teenager with arson tonight in a fire that killed two of his brothers. Eight-year-old Michael Clemens and his five-year-old brother James were trapped in the house by flames when firefighters arrived. Six others managed to escape. Police were able to contact the children's parents who were vacationing out of the country. Neighbors were shocked by the tragic outcome. It's kind of scary you think about it because, I mean, it's only what, half a mile from where I live. Just got, now when you see the problems they have, you got to think that uh, the problems we have are very small compared to this. In the backyard, they have a trampoline. We used to come over here and jump and stuff. <clears throat> and little kids used to come down with us and play around with us a little bit. They were pretty cool. The teen is undergoing psychological tests. Police won't say why or how he started the fire. The search is over tonight for a teenager who escaped from a Baltimore County Juvenile Detention Center. State police say a 17-year-old at the Charles Hickey Training School walked out shortly after dinner. It got too dark for police to keep looking for the boy. They say they'll pick up where they left off tomorrow. The teenager is not considered dangerous. This election year, much has been said about Willie Horton. He's the convicted killer who attacked a Maryland couple after escaping from a Massachusetts prison on a weekend furlough. That furlough was granted in a program during Governor Michael Dukakis's term. As Channel 2's Mark Vernarelli reports, a new letter sent by Maryland's Republican Party leader has opened the door for a fierce debate about campaign ethics. The letter is complete with photographs. Michael Dukakis on one side, on the other, convicted killer Willie Horton. For four pages, it talks repeatedly about the Dukakis-Horton team, at one point asking, is this your pro-family team for 88? The letter assails the governor for his Massachusetts furlough program and warns voters that a vote for Dukakis could lead to a visit from another Willie Horton. We think this is an outrageous campaign strategy. I mean, this is just another way that the Republicans and the Bush campaign has used fear and smear tactics in this election year, and we're disgusted by it. Now, this is the worst kind of politics. It's disgraceful. But that kind of reaction is apparently not limited to Democrats. I think it ought to go in the wastebasket. The letter is a very old letter. It's six weeks to two months old. And at that time when I saw it initially, I was critical of it, and I have not changed my mind. The tone of the letter also caught many voters off guard. But I think that you should win an election based on your strengths, not by attacking the person that's on the other side of the fence. I think it's extremely disappointing that um, they have to resort to these sort of tactics instead of looking at the issues, which is what it's all about. They say everything in politics is fair, in love and war and politics. Chances are good we've not heard the end of this little four-page letter, especially in light of the fact that this week both Marilyn Quayle and Kitty Dukakis are set to visit Marilyn. It's a pretty good chance that both women will field and raise a lot of questions about the strategy and the issue behind it. Mark Bernarelli, Channel 2 News Weekend. Maryland's Dukakis headquarters will ask for a formal apology from Vice President Bush this week. With Election Day only days away, Democrat Michael Dukakis made a sharp change in campaign strategy, actually embracing the L word he's been dodging for months now. Yes, I'm a liberal in the tradition of Franklin Roosevelt and Harry Truman and John Kennedy. Dukakis labeled himself a liberal during whistle stops in Central California. His campaign aides say their polls show he's tightening the gap with George Bush in many key states, including California. In the meantime, Republican George Bush reversed his plans to take a day off and made a last-minute campaign visit to Pennsylvania. The vice president attended a pep rally and later met with Cardinal John Crowell. The wife of vice presidential candidate Dan Quayle will be in the Baltimore area tomorrow, speaking on behalf of her husband and the Republican ticket. Marilyn Quayle arrives at BWI Airport early in the morning and plans to speak to sixth graders at a Glen Burnie Elementary School. 
The wife of the former president of the Philippines arrived in New York City today. Imelda Marcos came to face charges that she and her husband looted more than $100 million from their country. Mrs. Marcos will be arraigned tomorrow on racketeering and other charges. A judge has asked doctors to check her husband to see if he's well enough to travel from Hawaii to appear in court. It's being called one of the biggest takeovers in U.S. history. There's word tonight that the Philip Morris Tobacco Company will buy out Kraft Foods. If the agreement goes through, Philip Morris will pay more than $13 billion for the food company. Well, next up, Tony Pagnotti joins us for a look at our Halloween forecast. We'll be right back. Are you watching your door? You should, because Errol's, America's number one place to rent movies, is hanging yellow bags on thousands of doors all over town. And there's valuable prizes, gifts, and discounts in every bag. Errol's has more movies and more copies of the hit movies. And now, Errol's presents free prizes. All you need to win is a door. If you haven't received your yellow bag yet, get yours today at Errol's Video, E-R-O-L-S. Just when you thought it was over, Bob Davidson Ford announces the return of factory rebates. That's right, up to $1,000 factory cash in your pocket or use it for a down payment. Choose from over 800 new Fords like 89 Escorts as low as $65.95. $65.95! New 89 full-size pickups from $89.95. $89.95! But hurry, these spectacular deals won't live forever. Now through Halloween only at Bob Davidson Ford, where prices won't scare you. Westminster Burial Ground on Fayette and Green Street is a site for a Halloween tour tomorrow night from 6 and... Dad always had his act together, and so he was ready to retire. And now I watch him with our little girl, and I'll tell you something. He's really living. I could learn a couple of things from the old guy. Carla's on the warpath next time on Cheers. Come on, Carla, turn that frown upside down. She just found out her ex is getting married again. And what better time for him to show up and show off the latest Tortelli model? Watch your mouth. Hey, why can't this guy ever make up his mind anyway? I want you back. And what about his brand new wife number two, huh? I lose her in the bus station. That's where I found her. <laughs> next time on Cheers. Cheers, tonight at 11.30 on Channel 2. Well, we should know sometime tomorrow if anyone struck it rich in Maryland's lotto jackpot. This week's drawing was worth $7 million, but we do know at least one group of winners in the largest jackpot in North America. Fifteen hospital workers in San Diego say they all have a share in one of the winning tickets from California's lotto, and that lotto had a jackpot of $60 million. Officials say there were three winning tickets, and each ticket gets $20 million. $20 million for the next 20 years. And I can tell what you'd buy if you won $20 million. You got it. I'd buy a whole bunch of uh, pumpkinatis here. Uh, how do you like this? I love it. The uh, folks at Balloons Over America at the little uh, costume party provided me with this and you know he's helium inflated and if I move this little object he could go flying into the uh, frightening sky with all the witches but we'll keep him right here Do we have to? For now. <laughs> I know, I, <laughs> I've been Ro waiting for it. Robin is, to wants to see him launch then we could hear a loud explosion when the helium uh, explodes but there'll be frost on all the pumpkins tonight as a matter of fact we could have uh, record-breaking temperatures. Do you feel kind of silly that we're talking between uh, this there? <laughs> Let's check the weather together, Tony. Do you like that, Robin? Uh, <laughs> sh there she goes. If a pumpkin head could have my job, if he can learn how to say Baltimore, let's get out the door and check our weather together. All right. And uh, see, he said it. That means to go out the door. When the pumpkin says it, you got to listen to it. All right, here we go. Clear. And our temperature right now is 39 degrees. That's at the city level. Out at the airport, it's 38. The humidity is 46%. Winds north at 8. And the barometer is steady. Our high temperature today got all the way up to 54 degrees. Still 10 below normal. 
And yes, the sunset is what you want to watch because folks, from here on in, we are going to have some really dark early evenings. At a little after five, you'll see it being dark from now on in. And uh, there are your tides. All right, let's take a look at the satellite picture right now. And you'll see that we are indeed clear. Good stuff. Uh, no real cloud cover to find. It's all down to our south. The uh, cloud cover and some of the rain that we're seeing down south could be a problem if you want to call it a problem on Tuesday because what happens, uh, we get a southerly flow of air, that's going to warm us up, but again it brings us some clouds and showers maybe on Tuesday, but trick or treat tomorrow is looking mighty fine, and yeah, here it is. This is the last forecast for October, right? Where did the month go? November after uh, our last uh, day there with Halloween and 54 degrees, a lot of sunshine tomorrow. Where, oh, the pumpkin's gone. He just flew up into the atmosphere. Uh, 54 degrees, a lot of sunshine. You will like Halloween day and Halloween night. But watch out, 27 degrees. If we hit this overnight low, we'll break a record that stood for 115 years for an overnight low temperature for this date. 32 and a lot of sunshine as you wake up tomorrow morning. Trick-or-treaters tomorrow night will need a coat because it's going to be chilly out there. And as we work our way through the afternoon, 53 in sunshine, early tomorrow night, 48 degrees. And yes, the trick-or-treaters will be out there. Watch out. Uh, you don't want to uh, see the ghosts and goblins having a bad Halloween. There's your Monday, 53. Tuesday, the clouds and chance of showers. But we're going to warm up a little bit, 60 by midweek. Thursday, 63 in sunshine. And Friday, oh, can you believe, almost near 70 in the upper 60s. But uh, all in all, it looks like we have... Uh, more of a treat than a trick for all our Halloweeners, Robin. It looks like a nice, nice week coming up. Yes, Not indeed. too cold. It's going to warm up a little bit. Yeah, after tonight. Tonight's the uh, probably gonna be the coldest we've had. Well, at least this month. Hmm. Well, your pumpkin had a date. I had to let it go. Yeah, he turned into uh, something or other. Okay. Goodbye, <laughs> Mr. Pumpkin. <laughs> Thanks so much. Sports Extra is next. Martin Wyatt tells us there was a surprise winner in the Chicago Marathon, and the Redskins were roughed up in Houston. That's next on Channel 2 News Weekend. Ah, uh, the 89 Toyota trucks are here. Get the scoop. Right. A 4x2 V6? Toyota trucks are all new. Your Toyota dealer has lots of 89s, and he's starting the model year with remarkable savings. Outstanding. So are the deals. Right now, you can save up to $704 on option packages. They're available now? Now. Well? Hey, who bought the new Toyota? See your Toyota dealer today for a remarkable deal on a remarkable Toyota truck. Last year, you witnessed the excitement of the Calgary Olympics. Now the world is coming to Vail and Beaver Creek for the 1989 World Alpine Ski Championships, featuring the world's greatest skiers, an international celebration, and the magic of a Colorado ski vacation at Vail and Beaver Creek. Seven-day lodging, lift ticket, and event ticket packages start at just $557 per person. Call now for your free World Championships vacation planner. Now, take it away at Macy's with 20 to 50% savings and our special take it away bag. Enter to win a 10-day cruise from Rio de Janeiro to Buenos Aires or a 1989 Nissan 240SX Fastback. Just fill out an entry blank at any Macy's. Everyone's a winner with a week of savings and our carry-all bag. Just $8.95 with a $30 purchase or more. Take it away this week at all Macy's. Buick Regal, the hottest selling coupe in its class. Better than ever. Now comes a four-door Buick just as dramatically new. The 1989 Century. What could be better than a Buick? The sleek new styling that redefines the American family car. The smoothness and precision control of new Dynaride suspension. And it's all sticker price from just $12,199. Move up to Buick luxury and performance. Buick. Step into the next century today. Seaboyle, Pat Hayes, Ray Keach, Miller, Bud Schmidt, or Wilkins. There's no better way to welcome the beginning of fall than to celebrate Halloween. It seems parents enjoy the eerie eve just as much as the kids, and folks have been trick-or-treating all weekend. Costume contests were held at North Plaza Mall, where you could find Jack in the Boxes and Marilyn Crabs, and the Three Musketeers and a Tom Turkey were at Belvedere Market. 
Both events were sponsored by Balloons Over America and the Free State Montessori School. To make it a safer Halloween, area hospitals are offering these safety reminders. Use face paint on youngers rather than a mask to cover the face. Make sure your child's costume is fire resistant and not so long that your child could trip on it. And let them carry a flashlight, never a candle or a lantern. And when they get home, you should sort through and throw out any old or suspicious looking candy. Well, that's it for Channel 2 News Weekend. Join Horace Holmes tomorrow for our first news of the day on Channel 2 News Today. Then join Beverly Burke at noon along with Jack Dawson on sports and Ron Riley with the weather. I'm Robin Robinson. Have a safe and happy Halloween. And now here's Martin Wyatt with Sports Extra to tell us that it ain't over till it's over. Well, you know, it explains it. I, I forgot it's Halloween. There's some guys <laughs> masquerading as the Redskins in Houston. <laughs> I thought that was our team. That's somebody else's team. We don't know who they are. <laughs> here's a Sports Extra headline. The little big man stood tall today. Doug Flutie showed his old teammates he had the right stuff and at their expense. Joe Montana stayed on the sideline. The 49ers followed a new leader who showed them the winning way. And Dallas coach Tom Landry under siege. The Cowboys continue to sink in the NFC East while Phoenix is rising. The legs were churning in Chicago. A little known runner from Mexico takes the Windy City Marathon. Sunday Sports Extra is straight ahead. Sunday Sports Extra with Martin Wyatt is brought to you by Town & Country Pontiac Nissan, the home of Mr. Nobody. If it's not a Town & Country deal, it's not your best deal. Well, it would take some divine intervention for it to change, but it looks like the Redskins are losing, and losing big in Houston. The Astrodome. The Redskins, in fact, are getting skint in the Dome of Horror. The Astrodome in, in Houston, the Oilers, with a devastating first half, led 24 to 3. They now lead in this contest 41 to 10 in the final five minutes. The Skins, of course, hurt themselves. They had five big turnovers in the first three periods. The first of the five turnovers set up the Oilers' first touchdown, a botched handoff between Doug Williams and Kelvin Bryant. Ray Childress recovers on the Skins 25. Now, that set up this. Warren Moon touchdown throw that will go to Drew Hill. Hill just killed the Skins all day. 11 yards, 7 nothing, first period. Now, Warren Moon was red hot. He even ran the option for a score late in the first half, and the Oilers led 24 3 at the half. The Skins touchdown came on a 77 yard drive. Big play, a fourth and 10 completion to Kelvin Bryant over the middle, 30 yards to the one, and that set up a touchdown plunge. Two plays later, Tim Smith capped the drive. Skins pulled within 24-10 in the third, but Houston, they just poured it on. Drew Hill victimized Lane Barry Wilburn, his third touchdown catch, this one 33 yards. Houston answered for a 31-10 margin. They kept pouring it on. Houston with a big game from Warren Moon and Drew Hill plus Redskin turnovers. They are leading now in the last five minutes, 41-10. And it does not get any easier for the Skins with New Orleans, Chicago, the 49ers, and then Cleveland in the next four weeks. Yeah. Now, if the Redskins lose, that means the Giants will take over first place in the NFC East all alone. The Giants dodged the bullets themselves with an overtime win over the toothless Detroit Lions, 13 to 10. Detroit fans, they're getting uglier and uglier, folks. Look at those guys. Look at that hair. In overtime, Lions hand the Giants the win. Gary James fumbles a handoff exchange, and Lawrence Taylor pounces on the ball on the Lions, 22. Three plays later, Paul McFadden kicked this 33-yard field goal to win it for the Lions. Uh, for the Giants, they are 6-3. Tom Landry's off to his worst start in 25 years at Dallas. Cowboy quarterback Steve Pallour completed only nine passes, but this one went 50 yards to Ray Alexander. Two defenders fall down. Dallas led Phoenix 10-3 early in the game. But Earl Farrell scored two touchdowns, including this 14-yard TD reception. Farrell ran for a two-yard score in the final minute. Phoenix topped Dallas 16-10. The Cards end a two-game losing streak. Atlanta coach Marion Campbell in Philadelphia, where he was once fired. Randall Cunningham made Campbell's return miserable with two fourth-period TD passes to Chris Carter. This one went 50 yards. Nice move by Carter to score. Eagles led at 24-20, but second-year quarterback Chris Miller brought Atlanta back. His 49-yard scoring pass to Michael Haynes, who gets away from two defenders. His third scoring pass of the game, that would be the game winner. Atlanta shocks Philadelphia 27 to 24. The loss really hurts the Eagles' chances for a playoff spot. They drop to 4-5. and five. The win is only the second 
for Atlanta. Four years ago, he was America's little big man when he won the Heisman Trophy at Boston College. Today, Doug Flutie stood tall once again. We'll be right back. Mr. Nobody here at Town & Country Pontiac Nissan, where we are in full swing with our big clearance sale. I see you reduced every 88 model in stock to the lowest price ever. Look for the clearance tag on each car. No hassle, no dickering, and right now we offer financing where there's no payment due until next year. Come out now during this big clearance sale. You'll never save more in a Pontiac or Nissan. If it's not a Town & Country deal, it's not your best deal. Town & Country Pontiac Nissan, 8903 Valair Road in Perry Hall. Trust me on this one, Vern. I know this to be true. When you buy a name brand appliance, stereo, TV, or camcorder somewhere else, you might only save this much. But buy at Luskin's, and you can save this much every day. One might call this phenomenon pizza logic. Because any way you slice it, Vern, Luskin's the cheapest guy in town. Know what I mean? Help yourself, Vern. The taste has to be sweet in Doug Flutie's mouth tonight. His old teammates on the Chicago Bears never did want him on their club. They said good riddance, riddance when he was traded last season to New England. And before their matchup today, some Bear players repeated their thoughts that Flutie was a no talent. Well, Flutie only completed six passes for New England, but four of them were for touchdowns. He takes the pass to a stunning 30-7 to upset of the Bears. Mike Ditka not happy to see his old protege killing his ball club. First play, Flutie went for the whole ball of wax. He hits Irving Fryer, and they will combine 80 yards scoring play with only 18 seconds gone in the football game. Another nice move to get into the end zone. Meanwhile, Jim McMahon, no member of the Flutie Flan Club, fan club strained his knee he's out a month flutie's fourth td throw 26 yarder to stanley morgan new england behind doug flutie shocks the bears 30 to 7 only the bears second loss new england's new owner victor kayam a happy happy man showdown in cleveland browns fans thinking super bowl they host cincinnati cincinnati's offense kept out of the end zone but their defense well, they got six. Dave Fultz had picked off Brandon Kozar, goes 16 yards for the score. Bengals lead at 7-3. Cleveland special teams killed the Bengals. Frank Minifield blocked the punt. Herman Fontenot recovers for a touchdown. Cleveland up 20-10. Cleveland dominated the Bengals defensively. They were tough all day. Michael Dean Perry sacking Boomer Esiason to end the game. Cleveland, 23-16 winners. No more empty seats for Buffalo home games. Six straight sellout. The Bills defense had a field day on Green Bay. Mark Kelso intercepts Don Mikowski and Motors. 78 yards for the score. The Bills also returned a fumble for another score. Buffalo shuts out Green Bay 28-0. The Bills with six sacks. They are the only 8-1 team left in the NFL. Well, the 49ers had to win against Minnesota today to stay in shouting distance of the Saints and Rams in the NFC West Chase. But Joe Montana was hurt. His replacement, Steve Young, had the play of the day to win the game for the 49ers 24-21. Now, Montana on the sidelines with Coach Bill Walsh. Here's the brilliant Steve Young play. Third and two, under fierce pressure. Young will duck away from the rush, then races upfield, breaking tackle after tackle. That's three, four, yes, going some more. Five tackles he breaks. Six. He's gone. 49 yards to lift the 49ers to a 24-21 victory in the final two minutes. He also threw for 232 yards. Raiders first-year coach Mike Shanahan has his team still alive in the week AFC West. And Bo Jackson doing pretty good at his part-time job. Bo runs 22 yards for the score. The Raiders top punchless Kansas City 17-10. Steve Berline started for Jay Schrader. He got the win. The scoreboard, the Rams never scored a touchdown, but four Mark Lansford field goals lifted them past New Orleans 12 to 10. The Saints and Rams tied atop the NFC West. Kelly Stouffer passed for two touchdowns, Seattle 17-14 over San Diego, and Dan Marino tossed two TD passes to Mark Clayton. Miami just getting by Tampa Bay 17-14. The Jets win their first ever game over Pittsburgh 24 to 20. Final touchdown set up by a block. Uh, kick. Monday night, big game, Denver at Indianapolis. They were on the run in Chicago this morning. We'll have the Chicago Marathon and hockey action when we return. Mr. Nobody here at Tana Country Pontiac Nissan with a clearance sale that will shock everyone. Look at these cars. Look at these prices. 
That's all you have to do because I have tagged every 88 model in stock with our lowest clearance price to move them out. And that means no hassle, no dickering. There are factory rebates up to $600 right now on selected models. And financing available with no payments until next year. But you have to hurry when these 88s are gone, so is this sale. If it's not a town and country deal, it's not your best deal. Remember, if you buy any Oreo season ticket plan for 1989, you're guaranteed a choice of preferred seats in the new ballpark. But you better be quick and call 243-9800. Otherwise, who knows where you'll end up sitting. Over a hundred years ago, there was a new bank on the block called Providence. And this block, like many others, grew into neighborhoods, many with Providence help and many with names like Timonium, Arbutus, and Canton. Yet even today, with new name banks propping up every day, Providence still the bank on the block you grew up with. Nothing will ever change that. Providence Bank of Maryland, where banking comes to life. The Chicago Marathon at one time attracted all the major names in the running world, but after a hiatus of a year, it has returned with a $50,000 first prize, but no big guarantees to pull down the big names. Still, the organizers have to be pleased. A huge turnout without the marquee names, though. And little-known 21-year-old Alejandro Cruz of Mexico broke from a pack at the 16-mile mark and pulled away for an easy win in two hours, eight minutes and 57 seconds. A Soviet runner was second, and Lisa Weidenbach was the top female finisher at the Chicago Marathon. While the Capitals are struggling in the cellar of the National Hockey League's Patrick Division, the two top clubs went head-to-head, -head, and a lot of blood was spilled at Madison Square Garden. Pittsburgh and the Rangers went at it, and I mean literally. Third period was fight-filled as Mario Lemieux had to leave the game after getting smashed in the chest by Ranger David Shaw. That was Lemieux on the ice. He walked away on his own power. When they started playing it, it was a career game for Tony Granato. Four goals in two periods. The Rangers bombed Pittsburgh 9-2, and former skipjack coach Gene Upriaco not happy. His Penguins got stuck. In Winnipeg, fans out to see the great one, Wayne Gretzky. He didn't disappoint. Gretzky with the L.A. Kings scored unassisted with the loose puck. He gets his own rebound past Eldon Riddick. Winnipeg prevailed over Gretzky and company, though 8-4 to four was the final. Well, that is Sunday Sports Extra for tonight. For director Paul Pickler, for cameraman Fred Slade and producer Michael Gaffigan, thank you for watching, and please join us again next week. Sunday Sports Extra has been brought to you by Town & Country Pontiac Nissan, the home of Mr. Nobody. If it's not a Town & Country deal, it's not your best deal.